Okay, so I'm Vicky Townsend. I'm the Senior Managing Attorney at Pure Ideas. I'm an experienced UK and European patent attorney with a background in manufacturing engineering and also in biomedical engineering. So I work with inventors to help them protect their innovations, um, whether that's through obtaining patents um, or developing a, a more complex IP strategy and getting all the right IP agreements in place. So anything around um, sort of protecting that technology using IP. Brilliant. I think mm. we'll uh, dig into that shortly. Um, Danielle, did you want to give a quick intro? Right, yeah, yes. <laughs> I am Danielle Malone. I'm a trademark attorney at Pure Ideas. I started working at Pure Ideas in 2019 as trainee professional support. And then I have worked my way up qualifying as a trademark paralegal and then as a trademark attorney last year. So I work with clients to help them protect their brands um, around the world with uh, trademark searches, trademark filings, oppositions and prosecutions. So anything to do with branding, I can help with. Brilliant. So as a as a company, you cover quite a lot of bases. Um, so where where whether you do this company specific or individual, I don't mind, but where where did it kind of all start in terms of the IP side of things? What's the what's the kind of history around Pure Ideas? How did it get to where it is today? What types of companies are you working with at the moment? Obviously, without sharing anything, because we all know about IP and you can't actually share anything. So, uh, <laughs> what, what's the what's the kind of background around the types of people you're working with and how why manufacturing? I can tell you a bit about where Pure Ideas came from. So yeah. Pure mm -hmm. Ideas was born out of a long existing old school intellectual property firm about eight years ago. Um, it was originally set up as a paralegal based um, business that focused on the formality side of things. So processing patents and trademark renewals, um, recording any changes in intellectual property ownership or addresses on the official registers around the world. Um, ensuring that all the formality requirements um, for recently granted, recently granted European patents have been completed in the various member states. That's still a huge part of what we do today as a business, but in recent years we have built up a team of patent and trademark attorneys um, and also IP litigators so that we can now provide a full service intellectual property um, offerings for all of our clients so they can protect our ideas um, from conception all the way to expiry and then more recently in 2023 we became a part of the MAPT group who is a successful um, group of law firms across the UK who um, have this kind of one sole focus idea of making a positive difference so that's a bit about who we are and where we've come from. Nice. Um... Vicky, did you want to put a bit of a manufacturing spin on that in terms of your background and experience and where the, the kind of manufacturing clients come from and that sort of thing? Yeah, so um, all of our patent attorneys have a sort of an engineering or physics physical sciences kind of background. Um, so we naturally gravitate to, to inventions in that kind of an area. Um, we've got um, some sort of established links with, with smaller um, manufacturing and um, engineering type businesses um, and advise them on all sorts of things from, you know, from, from um, things like ALM and um, processes for composite, composite design, um, all sorts of metal joining um, processes, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, you know, we, we like to get out. We work with the MTC um, and get involved in some of their events to try and get more involved within the, the manufacturing community. Um, so yeah, that's just our core technical area um, in terms of protecting ideas. We like to work with technologies we know about and um, that's mine. If I have the next multi-million pound idea, when do I get in touch with you? Ooh. As, as soon as you like. Um, we'll tell you if it's too early to do anything about it. 
Um, there's various things you're going to need if you want to protect it. So it needs to be a little more than just a concept. It has to be a concept that even if you haven't actually developed it and, and proved it can work, the science has to be sound behind it. So, you know, you're able, you need to be able to um, convince me based on the existing laws of physics that whatever you're doing is something that can be done. Um, and then we can sort of look at putting in sort of a patent specification on that basis. Um, but, you know, the, the sooner you can get a filing date on a patent application, the better, um, because the longer you leave it, the higher the chances somebody else is going to get in there and, and protect the idea first. Um, or it's going to get published and then you'll lose the chance altogether. So. Yeah. And then from my side of things, for trademarking, the sooner the better. As soon yeah. as you have a name or a brand, protect it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, I don't have the next multi million pound product, unfortunately, but <laughs> wouldn't that be nice? I think, yeah. I think the rule of thumb, as you say, is as soon as possible, at least have a conversation so you can map out what it is that you've got to do and and you know obviously it's a very important thing of of developing product ideas and and actually making sure it's protected and you're doing it in the right way and yeah the amount well, of time so i speak to people that don't have patents or protection in place and they just start telling me the idea and it's, it's you're like go down and <laughs> talk to the right people first and yeah. put the right things in place yeah, we'll always um, tell you if it's too early and then, you know, we won't charge you for telling it's too early. Yeah. So, you know, please come to us as soon as you feel ready to share. Yeah, definitely. What um, what would you say sets Pure Ideas apart from other patent and IP related companies? Oh, OK. Um, I think probably it's, it's really in our culture and our pricing models um, would be the two things. So... Culturally, um, particularly as part of the MAPT group, we very much value people, and that's not just within our team, but also our client base and the people we work with. So we're quite committed to building um, personal relationships, and Connex has been a great way to do that with, um, you know, with other sort of smaller businesses of a like kind of mind. Um, so, you know, we try and do a lot of face-to-face -face interaction with our clients um, so that they can ask us questions um, when we're trying to explain some of the complex aspects of IP. Um, we do work very hard on our written communications to try and set things out in, in normal English instead of using lots of legalistic language or references to specific laws and things. Um, and um, on the billing side, you know, we're conscious because we are a bit of an SME ourselves, we're sort of conscious that SME clients need to carefully watch their finances. Um, and, you know, to have an idea of when their bills are coming and how much they're going to be. So we set up a, a largely fixed price building um, billing model so that um, we can give notification in advance of when a bill is likely to come and what sort of, you know, what sort of size that bill is going to look like. Um, so we try to, you know, ad adapt everything we do just to be more accessible, to make IP more accessible. Um, to to the sorts of clients we want to work with which is the sme sector really yeah um and yeah i mean that's that's ultimately why you're members of the connex group because it's all around relationships first getting to know people building that familiarity having the conversations not okay. being pitchy not being salesy and just learning about people's businesses and seeing where you could potentially help moving forward and that's Absolutely. exactly what we encourage throughout the entire group anyway um who wants to tackle this one so there's two parts to this so it's talking around obviously problems and challenges and most of our community meetings and our, our sessions that we do online are always around you know what problems are people facing what are your biggest challenges those sorts of things to get that knowledge transfer and, and skills transfer between members within the group so Firstly, I'd like to know a uh, challenge that Pure Ideas are facing as a as a group and as a company, and what you think is like the hardest element of what you're doing. And then, secondly, as a bit more of a wider manufacturing industry, what do you think the biggest challenge the the sector faces? Oh goodness. Um, yeah. Okay. 
Um, so, I mean, for us as a business, we're a fairly small fish in a, in a sea of quite big sharks. There's a lot of long established and much bigger IP firms out there. Um, and I think probably a big challenge for us is um, a need to get our brand out there and recognised and earn the confidence of potential customers that, you know, just because we're in a newer sort of fresher looking name, we still have, you know, experience and capabilities um, in all these areas. Um, so that's that I think is a challenge for us as, as a business. And I think being involved in things like this with Connex and, and getting out at sort of the exhibitions like Advanced Engineering is, is a great way to to build that that brand presence. Um, in terms of challenges within our industry, um, I think, you know, um, AI is a particularly interesting one. I think it's something that is affecting all businesses and including the manufacturing industry. Um, you know, because we, a lot of the systems we're using to sort of create some of their manufacturing systems and what have you will involve AI these days, um, as well as sort of the Internet of Things generally. Um, so for us, um, sort of trying to advise clients on protecting AI based inventions is quite a challenge because it's a relatively new area of law that's developing um, and the, uh, the sort of the legal decisions on whether or not or how you can protect AI um, are currently kind of swinging globally with, you know, decisions being reversed and changed back and forth. Um, so that's a little bit of a challenge at the moment. Um, as regards the Internet of Things, um, you know, sort of trying to get across to clients the dangers of, um, you know, having connectivity with their various systems through the Internet. Um, there is an issue with standard essential patents, which sometimes you sort of are forced to use if you're going to have um, kind of interconnected communications within whatever systems you're using. Um, and it, it is entirely possible that the owners of those patents may come knocking um, to, to, to ask for, for royalties for use of their patents. Um, so, you know, we, we try to do a little bit around advising businesses um, of the potential risk of that and sort of how best to prepare um, in case that scenario arises for them. Um, so, yeah. Interesting. Is Very that... interesting. <laughs> so you're already getting questions around AI and how they're linking into patents already, because I know yes. I know software has always been a bit of a minefield mm -hmm. in terms of patents and what you can protect in terms of digital software. But I guess AI just adds an entirely new level to that. It does, and and that's been part of the debate: is is I is AI the same as computer implemented inventions or not? Has been, you know, the question asked by some of the courts. Um, and do the same exclusions or you know rules apply to both? Um, so yeah, it's we had all this when software implemented things first started being a big industry. Um, it took a long while for the for the law to really settle down on what could and couldn't be done in patents, and I think we're just at the start of that with AI at the moment. Mm. I think it's interesting. Any, times. any potential benefits to AI? Would you say in terms of a lot at the initial stage of AI was a little bit of a minefield, and everyone's saying, "Oh, it's going to take all of our jobs, and we're not going to be able to. Mm. No one's going to be able to have any skilled jobs anymore, and you know, we're not going to have to think about anything." And AI is just going to do everything for us, which is obviously far from the truth. But, but okay, I don't know. go on. I don't think we can trust it to do that, certainly not yet. Um, I think the key is in um, really thinking hard about what are the best applications we can use it for. Um, and, you know, we, we've had a bit of a talk around this within our own industry. It's like, well, for example, there's been a legal case where um, a council somebody went to court with some paperwork and a case prepared using AI to summarize some case law and was subsequently exposed because the case law they put in that brief using AI was completely fictitious, um, which is a huge mistake to make and a huge problem if you're dealing in, in, in sort of legal situations. So, you know, that, that sort of shows you there are some lines where definitely we wouldn't want to involve AI in what we do. Um, so I think you have to really look at um, what are the risks if AI gets it wrong in the application you're planning to use it for, and you know, really weigh up, do we want to take that chance, however small, if AI can leave a, you know, uh, leave us with a with a big liability at the end of it. Um, but I think there are a lot of uses for it for you know organizing 
organizing data and sort of summarizing information um, for kind of internal maybe management processes, that kind of thing. But I, I'd be wary of using it for very critical data um, and asking it questions that have big consequences if you get the answer wrong. Yeah, and I think being careful what you're putting into the AI system, especially if it's a publicly owned one rather than an internally held system, because as soon as you put Definitely. something into AI, then it's it's out there. And I assume that applies for general patent-related stuff. If you start talking about a invention, a an a idea on a on a public AI platform, then that's that's on any good. public platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that's key, absolutely crucial with patents. Um, publication anywhere in the world in any kind of a form, whether it's a you know on the internet or a piece of paper you've left in a public place, a, you know, a video call to someone that's somehow saved saved on the internet or whatever. It, it's it's all potentially problematic. Um, so yeah, do be very careful. Just, just right. thinking about this now, I bet there's people out because we all use AI for you know word processing ideas that are helping with you know the odd social media post or a little bit of email yeah transcripts or you know doc word documentation whatever it may be we all do it as that little bit of initial idea generating but if people are doing that to fill in forms that have to go to you know the path through the ipm patent process then surely that by putting that invention, that idea, that little bit of description into an AI system is therefore making it public knowledge, which... Yes, which is a risk. Which point is a risk. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. <laughs> um, what are the, what are the, over the next few years, what are the biggest opportunities that you see for... Because obviously manufacturing, very important for the sector, very important for the UK economy, very important for all sorts of things that are being discussed. And there's definitely lots of momentum shifts at the moment. Do you see any big opportunities coming up from a patent point of view around that? I mean, in terms of sort of technology areas where there's a lot of activity going on, um, you know, we're seeing quite a lot in the in the green tech sector. Um, you know, so everything from battery technologies and and um, sort of EVs, carbon capture, and stuff like that, and to to turn these ideas into um, you know actual sort of products and workable things you you do need to be able to make them at, you know in a reliable way and at a sensible price um so you know there are a lot of challenges aligned with um the manufacturing industry that you know they need to do to to get us to a stage where we can um uh, you know create and, and actually market and commercialize some of these um you know environmentally helpful mm. technologies yeah, we're definitely in this. There's lots of opportunity around the new emerging technologies, the sectors that are. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's quite soon... a lot. Around... Go on. I was going to say there's quite a lot around things like composites and ALM as well. Yeah. Is another interesting area for manufacturing. There's yeah. so many new techniques for for ALM that are ongoing. Yeah, I think it's those well funded, well funded, well backed emerging technologies, EV, battery power hydrogen all of those sorts of things are definitely going to be an interesting opportunity for, for especially the uk manufacturing sector yeah. um yeah. I, I, I kind of want to loop back to ai <laughs> <laughs> i didn't want to make this whole thing about ai but daniel what's your opinion on ai in terms of image creation and i'm sure there's ways in which you can use an ai system to create a logo how does that work in terms of trademarking and and because surely it's going to start popping out similar looking logos mm -hmm. so i was going to say i think that's kind of a big area for growth in that it's going to help with create creativity and innovation and things like that but then with regards to kind of copyright and trademarking there's always an issue about ownership so if it creates it for you if you're using like a public ai do they own it? Do you own it? If you're not creating it yourself, that may be an issue. But I think because it's all so emerging, it's going to be a good one to keep an eye on. But mm. usually, yeah, it's difficult with regard. If there's, there's always issues when someone else does something for you and then you're trying to protect it as your own. Then if you're saying you just mentioned something about similarity, that's a huge problem with trademarking. So you can't have anything that's identical or similar to 
what someone else already has if it's for what you're doing so the goods and services that you're offering so it could be a tricky one yeah depending what it is yes. i think yeah ai with human intervention is the the way to be doing things at the minute so yeah so use it, an eye on it good ideas use it to you know spark those initial discussions or initial conversations but yeah. that's all it is it's an idea generating tool it's not a final piece of work no. absolutely yeah definitely yeah. and i think as well it, it, how far can you trust it if it's not really got that human touch always on it on mm. it so yeah it's got gonna be a good one to see how it all progresses but you got to keep your eye on it i'd say yeah yeah definitely <laughs> Um, I think we're going to do a series of events later in the year just focused around these sorts of topics and AI anyway. So, uh, yes, I think we'll loop back to that one. Um, so, obviously, you're exhibiting with us at um, Advanced Engineering. This is the second year that you've, you've done this with us now. Um, simple question. Why? Um, well, I mean, we had such a good time last year, didn't we? Um so, you know, we're a strategic partner of Connex. We, we've met a lot of people um, and made some great business contacts as well. Um, so it's great to just have that network to, to just generally bounce ideas off in terms of, of establishing and growing your own business. Um, but also, you know, we've been fortunate to generate some some actual work out of it as well. So that's been marvellous. Um, uh, yeah, spending more time in our Connex contacts, I think it'll, it'll, it'll be you're really good um mm. and i always get excited about two in the halls and seeing all the fun kit on display so i'm looking forward to that anything else you're looking forward to during the show i believe you're joining us on the panel discussion oh yes yes I, i'm looking forward with anticipation to that definitely <laughs> <laughs> yeah so our, our panel discussion is going to be around the the kind of power of networking and bringing together communities and and having that relationship first conversation with people building familiarity um oh, so yeah. that is, yes on the second day i believe on the main stage um mm -hmm. i believe it's two o'clock so yeah definitely come come and join us for that one um do you do you find you get good value out of these sorts of shows do you what's what's the main what are you what are you trying to achieve at a show like this what's your main kind of takeaway i think as i mentioned earlier i think the first thing for us is really just just getting our brand known out of there out there and it's sort of establishing a bit of a presence so that if people do have a need for the sorts of service we services we provide they'll come to us but i think also um you know just just generally um because of our culture we, we like to get out and just have conversations kind of off the record with, with people and, and just give them a bit of um, education as to the sorts of things they should be thinking about mm -hmm. so that they don't run into into any sort of traps in terms of, you know, accidentally giving up their, their valuable IP rights because, um, you know, we want everybody to get the benefit of their their innovations, um, particularly businesses the sort of size we are. You know, you can't afford to throw away some of your key technologies. Um, so, Definitely. yeah. There's really valuable and we learn a lot as well as to what's going on in terms of you know new technologies and what other people are thinking about mm. there's it's I think it's close to sorry go on then. <laughs> I was going to say it's just a bit of an education piece because we're learning about what there's a need for us and how we can help others and then also kind of spreading a bit more IP awareness and education because sometimes no one has any idea what we're on about <laughs> sometimes there's questions about a particular form of ip that's not what they need we get questions of people confusing patenting and trademarking for example so it's any way that we can help and raise awareness and a bit of an understanding is also why we want to help mm. yeah it's just that initial kind of soundboard that initial idea process to learn about learn about everything there is because it is ultimately a minefield and there's a lot going on and um, yeah. i think there's close to ten thousand attendees at this advanced engineering show over the two days and um, yeah. yeah. guarantee there's someone within that that's that's got an idea or got something that they, they potentially could bring to market so it's it's all about knowing where you are and having that initial conversation and then taking it away from the show and, and following up from there 
Yeah, um, we had great conversations last year with people just coming up and just asking general questions, and um, and others wanting to, you know, we had to sort of tell tell them to call us later, and because they had a lot of good ideas they wanted to share, but that wasn't really the place. Yeah, middle of the conference, but um, no, not when there's yeah. several thousand people walking around. <laughs> no. it, yeah, it's just those quick kind of snappy conversations. Get as much exactly. information as fresh as you can, and then follow it up and and go from there. Um, so obviously, thank you both for for joining us on this call. Um, I'm going to let you put me on the spot and uh, and put a question to me, so it can be anything really related to Connex, general business, my opinion on something, completely random. <laughs> Over to you. Put me on the spot. <laughs> All right, you're going to be well. I don't know if this is making it easier for you or not. Um, or not. Um, I've come up with something quite random. It's um, like. So I'm a bit of a Doctor Who fan. Don't know whether you are. No. Go on. I, I want to know your views on who would win in a fight. Would it be the doll or would it be the Cyberman? Oh, yeah, <laughs> sure, surely. <laughs> I only watch Doctor Who. <laughs> when David Tennant was on it. So I'm um, talking a while ago. Uh, <laughs> I mean, surely it's got to be the Dalek, right? It's, it's the classic. Everyone loves a Dalek, really. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big yeah, fan. A bit quite fun. a collection just over there as it goes. But... <laughs> that, was, that was a good, unexpected question. I like that <laughs> very much. Danielle, do you have one? See, we've gone down the same kind of route. So Vicky loves Doctor Who. I love Disney. And this is like, oh, we bond about these things. So my question was going to be, what's your favourite Disney film? Um, <laughs> Random questions. <laughs> Lion King. Oh, I love The Lion King. Oh, classic animation. Classic or film. Yeah. Yeah. Got to be the classic. Has to be. Has to be. The original, yes. Yep. Yeah. That's a good choice. There you go. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Well, I like those questions. They were very out there. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so thank you all um, for joining me. Um, you can catch us all at the Advanced Engineering Show on the 30th and 31st of October. I'm putting you both on the spot, what's our stand number? <gasps> oh, <laughs> I've been looking at this, 170. <laughs> <laughs> Q170. Oh, yes, it's right behind you. Look at that. Right <laughs> um, yeah, right next to the main stage. You won't be able to miss us. So, come along and uh, we will see you there. So, thank you both very much. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, see you there. Thanks a lot, thank Sam. You. We'll see you there.